All right, so if you're a gospel or a Christian bass player and you need to get good fast, then this video is for you. Let me set it up. Maybe you just picked the bass up a few years ago and you have this opportunity to play at a church. Maybe you've been playing for a while, but you just kind of fell off and now you're back in the game and you feel like you're like 20, 30 years behind or one of those variations of things that you have going on. Either way, you have to speed up and you have to speed up quickly in order to keep up. Well, keep watching. I'm going to show you how to do this and how to do it effectively. So stay tuned. All right, so the first thing I want to start with is point number one. You need a system. Oftentimes, as uh, musicians and bass players, uh, especially those of us who play in the church, we get so used to doing things a certain way and they work for amount of time. We think we keep doing that same thing and we're going to be straight. Sometimes that's true. Sometimes it's not so much. In the climate and the culture that we're in now, we got to learn a lot of music, got to learn it faster. The music is different than it was 20 years ago. It's, it's a lot different than it was even 25, 30 years ago. So if you're a bass player that's just picking back up, you can't do the same thing that you did 20, 30, even 15 years ago. So you need to develop a system. All right, for me, I use charting by using the number system. If you're not familiar with the number system, look up the Nashville number system and you can find out all you need to know there. But I use the numbers like one uh, through seven in terms of charting songs out because I'm always thinking about time management. I feel like most of you who are watching this video are like me. You have other things going on. We're busy adulting. So a lot of times you don't have, you know, 10, 12 hours a day to put into playing your bass and working on a song. So you need something that helps you to be able to learn songs quickly and also retain them quickly. I had a hard time retaining. It wasn't because I wouldn't put the time in and I wouldn't put the hours in. We would literally get songs on Tuesday and have rehearsal on Thursday and I was doing exclusively music and I would spend hours upon hours learning these songs and going over them and going over them and going over them, do them on a the rehearsal on Thursday, go all the way through the song up to the weekend, get there on Sunday, forget the song. And so it wasn't a lack of me putting in the time, it was just I had a hard time retaining. So after years of doing this, I had to develop a system and that system was charting the songs out. And then I got good at my system of charting and develop a shorter hand system of charting the songs out using the numbers. And that is what worked for me. I have a bass player that I'm working with now at the church that I'm music minister at and the system that that particular bass player is using. He has the words of the song and he's writing the numbers over the words of the song and that system kind of works for him in terms of the type of music that's being done. But in your regard, you have to figure out what works for your church because everybody is not the same. The type of songs I play, you might not play them at your church, but you have to find out what works for you. And the last thing with that particular point is stick to that system. And it's gonna take some trial and error. Stick to that system and keep fixing it as you go. Keep tweaking it, not necessarily fixing it, but keep tweaking that system as you go, as you work through whatever that thing is that you've come to find. This is a system, whether it be the number system for you, whether it be uh, sheet music if you read, if you're a reader, whether it be tab, whatever it is, make sure you work on that particular system, stick with it, and improve upon that system. For point number two, three levels of learning. If you've been around any of my videos, I've been talking about this idea of three levels of learning. And just for you, just in case it's your first time happening up on my video, I'm going to run through it real quick what the three levels of learning is. Level one, just get through the song. That's level one, just get through the song. Level two, figure out how you're getting through the song in terms of, okay, if they're playing, you know, one, uh, four, five, six. Figure out how they're moving through the song with the one, four, five, six. So it is, is it a um, pulsing? Or is it a different type of groove? Like level one would just be simply, you 
know where they're going and you know, okay, they're going to the one, they're going to the four, five, six. So that level two shows you how they're getting to it. And then the level three is the detail learning portion of it. And I've been talking a lot about this in all of my lessons in terms of if you get the meat and potatoes of the song and you figure out how they're getting through the song, now you got to do that third part of listening where you're getting the, the details of like... So you see that they're moving a little different going instead of So you learn that songs will be moving a little bit different and so now you start digging into the details. Here's why I say that level, uh, the three levels of learning are so important. People kind of overlook this step and this is why I've been really digging into it on these lessons a lot because I understand that the proof is in the pudding. You get the sauce in the songs in that level three of learning. You're gonna see your fastest learning happening in that level three of learning. I will say this, it's tedious and you're gonna see it's kind of hard at first, but that's just the nature of what we're doing here. We're trying to develop a skill so that we can execute this skill effortlessly and the more you do this and work on that level three of learning here's the good news it gets easier and your ear grows because you're working on training your ears to get better and to get better faster so now when you're in these church settings or people call out random songs that you've never heard before they're feeding you the numbers you've been doing this level three learning all the time it's a part of your regiment now it gets easier and easier for you to execute this stuff and you can just hear it naturally this comes over time a realistic timeline for some of you there if you're putting in the time and putting in the effort and the energy and really working out every single week and you can already play you should be able to see um measurable progress within the first three months of this process of finding your system and really digging into this level three, the three levels of learning. Depending on how you're working on it, you might see results earlier than three months, but I'm just being, you know, trying to be realistic for the majority of everybody who's watching this video. If you are doing the work, you should start really seeing a noticeable difference in your playing around the three month period. And as you go, you should every three months, your playing should be really increasing and you should be getting better, faster, not only noticeable to you, but noticeable to your bandmates as well. All right, for point number three, focus on targeted areas of practice. Now, this should be based on your last few performances. Wherever you performed at last or wherever you played at last, whether it be a church, a concert, whatever, you should focus on targeted areas of practice based on your last performance or your last few performances. Here's the reason why I say this. Because if you just practice on something random, I actually had a lesson with one of my students uh, just today. If you're just practicing on something random, then the chances of you using that right away is going to be very low. But if it's something that you've been struggling on from week to week and this is a reoccurring thing for you, well, if you dig in and really laser in, target in on that particular thing, then it's going to help you to improve that area. And what you want to do is you want to laser in on that area. And as you improve that thing, now spread it out and get the next thing that's the, the next biggest problem. So just say for you, speed is an issue. I know that's something that a, a lot of older players talk to me about. Speed has been the thing, trying to keep up, building that dexterity. So one of the things that I recommended for a player that I was talking to today, be aware of how you're playing. I noticed one of my uh, students was playing in his hands. He had this pulling thing going on and he was playing like this. And it turns out that particular thing was slowing him down because he's putting his hand in such a cramped position that it's making it more difficult for him to be uh, to have more speed. So one of the things I was telling him is to try to relax your right hand, straighten out your fingers a bit more. And it gives you a little bit more freedom in your right hand to speed up. And not only that, I told him to try to curl more with your right hand in terms of, you know, instead of having the full flyaway fingers, I deal with flyaway fingers from time to time, but there are levels of the flyaway fingers. Some of it you can get rid of. I have big hands, long fingers, so it just happens with me. Uh, but some of that stuff we can get rid of with 
developing our technique a bit more. So in your practice times, like really targeting in on your technique if that's an issue for you. Because for some of us, technique is not the biggest thing. For some of us, technique is the thing that's slowing us down. Like if you're playing with uh, your thumb all the time or playing with one finger all the time, that might be the thing that's actually slowing you down. So that targeted practice should be based on what's your biggest struggle. In order to find out what your biggest struggle is, you have to figure out uh, or be honest with yourself from your last performance. Okay, I did this pretty good, but that could have been better. What is that that thing down? Now write that down. Make a note of it. Make a Don't just make a mental note because you'll forget. Literally take out your phone or a piece of paper. Jot down what that thing is after that service. Like, this was good. Be sure. Be sure to give yourself credit for what you did well. I noticed that's another thing that us musicians who have that ear or we're trying to be better, we're notorious for tearing ourselves down and not giving ourselves enough credit. Be sure to give yourself credit for what you did right, you know? So, okay, I did this pretty good. My groove was pretty strong this week or I played the songs pretty well, but they lacked groove, they lacked feel endurance wasn't where it needed to be because we started playing shouting music and by the time we got in minute three i was about to run out of gas on and if you do that for a while and you're doing it in a really uncomfortable position then you're going to get tired so you want to make sure that you're working on your endurance if that's a thing for you you need to write down hey i need to work on my endurance what's some exercises that i can do that can help me to work on my endurance or dexterity for lack of better words, in terms of your fingers being able to move and you be comfortable with what you're doing. So that targeted practice and all those things, they're going to help you to get good or to get better a lot faster. So number one, you need a system. You have to have a system because without a system, you're just trying stuff from week to week and you're wasting your time. Remember that you don't, you don't have that much time to play with. If you're a kid, you have nothing but time on your hands. You could practice 10, 15 hours a day, then by all means, however you get it, get it. But if you're adulting like me and you don't have all those hours, maybe you have two and a half, three hours a day to put into this base because you're doing life, then you need a system that's going to help you to manage your time. Number two, the three levels of learning, really dig into the three levels of learning. You're going to find a lot of traction on that level three of learning, and it's going to help you to get there. And number three, focus on targeted areas of practice, what we just finished talking about. Make sure that you're targeting these areas. You're being honest with yourself. And not only that, I want to make sure that I make this note to you guys. Record yourself so that you can measure your progress that you're making that way you can see if it took you a month if it took you two months or if it took you three months like i said for the average person if it took you three months to really start seeing results in your playing because this stuff that i'm sharing with you guys uh, i want to help you i want to actually help you get better i see comments sometimes <laughs> I, I you know i have some trolls in the comments that talk about the fact that i talk a lot well here's the point i can just get on here and show you some stuff my uh, ambition when I get on here and do these YouTube videos I want you to walk away with something that's practical that you can actually use and in order for me to do that and explain it to you it requires me to talk on these videos so for the people that you know you don't resonate or I don't resonate with you because I talk a little bit in these videos I'm sorry but for the people that I am helping I hope that you find this stuff helpful and that's all I wanted to share with you guys today I just wanted to give you some tools that you can use right now that's going to help you to get faster. This is not a, you know, a magic trick or anything like this, but I can guarantee you if you implement these three things that I've talked about and you're consistent, you don't quit, don't give up, don't get frustrated, you're going to start seeing uh, results and you're going to start seeing them quickly. Just stick with the process. I can guarantee you, you're going to see the results. If you found this video helpful, be sure to hit that subscribe button. Also like this video, leave a comment. Let me know which tip was the most helpful for you where you currently are right now. And be sure to list your struggles. If there's something that you're struggling with that I could answer in the comments, I'll try to do my best to follow up and answer with you guys. Of course, if there's a lot of y'all, give me time to get around to you. But I thank you for watching this video today. I'm Jermaine Morgan, and I'm out. Peace.